we now have one of the highlights uh, of this annual lunch ahead of us, the awarding of four alumni awards. And as we've been doing, each of the winners will have a friend or a colleague introduce them. Uh, and so I'd like to uh, get started with the first uh, of our introducers and welcome my uh, friend and predecessor, Nick Lemon, back to the stage. Um, I'm here to introduce uh, Rainey Aronson Rath. He's uh, the first of our alumni medal winners. Uh, by my standards, uh, she still qualifies as a young alum. Um, and uh, at least by class, she's the youngest of, uh, we don't ask people's actual ages of our, of our honorees. Um, Rainey uh, has had a wonderful career in documentary film uh, for X period of time after graduation as a documentary journalist, and then for Y period of time in more recent years as part of the high command at Frontline, which uh, in my opinion is uh, the single best documentary producing news organization in the world. Um, she's, I wanna say a quick word for, for you print people about how amazing the work that Rainey does at Frontline is. So this will be stating to the, obvi the obvious to documentary people. Two things about documentaries. One, there's this incredible pressure to make things up or sort of improve reality. And you see this a lot in unnamed documentary houses work, but you never, ever, ever see it at Frontline. And that's really important and really rare. Number two, Almost everywhere else in the world of documentary, you get the story idea, and instead of going out to do the story, you go out to fundraise. And the funders want it to turn out this way or that way. Frontline is, is extremely rare, especially since the TV networks don't have documentary units anymore, that they can go from idea to assignment to execution without that often years-long middle step. It is a precious institution um, in the journalistic landscape. And Rainey, in a world of uh, people who can occasionally be a little high strung, is always calm, always dedicated, always a pleasure to work with, and always quietly insisting on the very highest quality. And so she's, she's had a hand in either as a documentarian herself or as an administrator and producer, an incredible string of, of, of journalistic achievement all over the world. Final uh, thing I want to say is um, some of you uh, may have had the pleasure of experiencing this personally, that we're in this uh, supposedly fabulous new world of networks um, that we've entered in recent years. Um, it used to be that you could say at a gathering like this, you know, there were these great eternal, or so they seemed to me when I was young, news organizations that will always be the steady foundational rocks of the business and will sort of take care of the business collectively. Well, some days that's still true, some days it's not true. Instead, there's uh, what I would call sort of the uh, non-gulag archipelago of a lot of different institutions of which the journalism school is one, um, many of which are new, many of which are not for profit, that work in a looser way to keep up the meaning of what it means to be a journalist. And one thing I really appreciate about Rainey is she understands that. She has helped move Frontline and the whole profession into the digital age. Um, but she spends a lot of time that you guys don't see working the network and strengthening the network. Frontline is an important note on the network, but the network's important too, and that it's as strong as it is today is, is substantially because of Rainey's work, which she doesn't claim credit for and therefore doesn't get enough credit for. Come on up and uh, with, we're proud of you.
Oh, it's amazing to be here. I didn't know I was the youngest alum, but I'll claim it. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here today. Um, I want to just say quickly that Nick actually was one of the people who really helped me along the pathway to understanding that we are increasingly looking at a new digital age. And I'm going to get to the story of Nick, but thank you, Nick. I really appreciate all your words of support for Frontline, but also the work that we do. So. I looked at the last 20 years and I thought, you know, maybe I should tell my journey through the lens today about my relationship with Columbia. And it has been vital. And it has been long now. It's been 20 years, not as long as 70. I know you guys are amazing. But it's been long. In my life, it's been long. I want to start with my acceptance letter to Columbia because it was one of those profound moments. I think if we all think about it, you can remember the moment you got your acceptance letter. And I was in Taiwan as a young reporter, and I was literally on a scooter bike, and I opened the letter, and I almost fell off my scooter bike. My brothers are here, Adam and Ben. They know I am the ultimate multitasker. And I literally was so pleased to see that I had been accepted. I remember feeling a sense of optimism, and that optimism was certainly a really young person's optimism. I was 23, but I hold that optimism to this day about journalism and the importance of journalism and how we have to all work towards sustaining journalism. And I think we're under pressure and challenges that we've never had before, but I think that it's really important and that optimism is still in me, just as if I was 23. And I'm really happy about that and I've been blessed with an amazing career. I wanted to talk a bit about why I felt I was able to be a journalist sitting in Taiwan this is right after college, I remember writing my parents. I wrote my mother and father, they're both here, that I really wanted to stay in Taiwan. By the way, it was a blue aerogram, international, no email, so I had to wait for their response. I wasn't coming home. And I wanted to be a journalist, and I waited for their reply. And what they told me was I could do whatever I wanted to do. And in fact, they had no doubt that I was going to find my way in the world. And I think that kind of faith in your children and in your own self that you can find your own way, well, at least for me, it came from my parents. So thanks, mom and dad. It's nice to see you here today. I think it's always important to thank your parents and your teachers, right? Those two, those two elements in my life have been crucial. I'd also like to say to my son Arjun, who's here, he's eight and amazing and teaching me everything I need to know about media in 2015. Thank you. I want to tell you something. Don't open a letter on a scooter bike, but I do hope you find something that you love so much that you might open it, and I know you will because you'll find your way as well. My year at Columbia was profound. My advisor was Seymour Topping. He couldn't come today, but he was amazing and what a privilege. My infamous RW1 professor, Dick Blood, I wish he was here. I miss him. I see people laughing in the crowd. Anyone who knows Dick Blood knows that he was a force, right? He was a force for good. What he taught me about factual analysis, being on the money and being truthful is key to my job every day and to my own sense of integrity. I carry this with me every moment. And when I look at decisions that I've made through my career, they've always been to be with people like Dick Blood who actually teach me something and I can learn from. I know that's true when I joined Betsy West at ABC News. She might be here. I think she's been busy. There she is. Hi, Betsy. Nice to see you. I can tell. I really appreciate that she hired me on my first documentary um, series. That was called Turning Point. It was remarkable. And then again, I was hired by David Fanning, and that again was a choice to work for someone and with someone that I felt I was going to learn the most from. And that connection happened here at Columbia. In fact, 
I was winning my first DuPont as a young ABC producer, and he was winning, I don't know, Steve, maybe like his 80th by then, but anyway, we were sitting at the same table, and we were both talking about something really crucial, which was new technologies and our love for technologies that actually open the doors to journalism that allow for more intimate journalism and closer storytelling. And I decided on stage in the world room that I wanted to work for him, and it's been 15 years since I joined Frontline, which has been amazing. Another really special Columbia moment was with Nick Lemon when we were meeting and talking about my new job at Frontline, and he invited me to one of his classes. And this is very symbolic. I think Columbia has done this remarkable job of maintaining journalistic integrity while actually acknowledging that we are now living in the digital age and we need to actually open our minds to different storytelling techniques, different ways of presenting our journalism, and he invited me to his class, which is about reimagining a news organization in the digital age, and it was like a light went off, and I realized at that moment, this is now eight or nine years ago, that I had to pay attention. I think the important message for me on the digital front, a lot of my emphasis is there, is that I do believe that we can take everything that we have learned from this amazing school and institution and bring it into the digital age forcefully. And I think it's our job to. So I wanted to say one last word about Columbia. Um, for a very long time, and Nick and I spoke about it, and then Steve and I started to speak about it, and Sheila, we really wanted to found a fellowship, and so we have, and I'm excited to announce that we have two postgraduate fellows coming to Frontline next year, which is amazing, and my expectation is... You guys have incredible students. They are inspiring. My expectation is that these postgraduate students are going to teach us as much as we're going to teach them. So I'm really excited about that. And we're also working with the Tau Center. We're doing a lot of virtual work with them, looking at new storytelling. So I have to say that my relationship with Columbia has been amazing and gratifying. And Dean Cole and everyone, and Marie, thank you so much for this amazing award. Thank you.